In this video, we will be exploring the concept of genetic linkage. When two genes occur closely together on the same chromosome and tend to be inherited together, those two genes are said to be linked. To illustrate this concept, we will use an example of two hypothetical genes that control flower color and flower size. The color gene has two alleles a dominant allele that produces red flowers, and a recessive allele that produces white flowers. The size gene also has two alleles, a dominant allele that produces big flowers, and a recessive allele that produces small flowers. In next week's lab, you will be performing virtual exercises to determine the nature of unknown genetic systems. When two genes are involved, you will need to determine whether the two genes are linked or not linked. Essentially, you are being asked to distinguish between the two possible scenarios for the chromosomal arrangement of the two genes. In one scenario, the genes could be located on separate chromosomes, as depicted on the left. In an alternative scenario, as depicted on the right, both genes could be lo located on the same chromosome. Those genetic systems are like the example shown here in that the phenotypes, but not the genotypes, of the individuals are apparent. Therefore, your goal is to perform a test whose phenotypic results can allow you to infer the chromosomal arrangement of the genes. In Mendelian genetics, this test is called a test cross. A test cross is a cross of an individual that is a heterozygote for both genes with an individual that is a homozygous recessive for both genes. The concept behind a test cross is really very simple. As we will see later, test crosses result in two kinds of offspring, parental and recombinant offspring. The chromosomal arrangement of two genes that is, whether they are linked or not linked, determines a relative proportion of parental and recombinant offspring. Therefore, by looking at the relative proportion of parental and recombinant offsprings produced by a test cross, one can determine the chromosomal arrangement of the two genes. First, we will determine what phenotypic proportions of offspring can be expected from a test cross if the two genes are on separate chromosomes. In a test cross, the homozygous recessive parent only contributes one type of gamete. Therefore, the phenotypes of the offspring are completely determined by the heterozygous parent. Depicted here are two chromosomes in the heterozygous parent. The larger chromosome carries the color gene, while the smaller chromosome carries the size gene. The homologs of each chromosome are depicted by purple and orange colors. Lastly, as is the case before cell division, each chromosome has been replicated and is shown together with its sister chromatid. All eight chromatids must be separated into four gametes, such that each gamete gets one color allele and one size allele. Because chromosomes assort randomly during meiosis, all four possible gametes are formed with equal probability. Fusion of these gametes with the gamete produced by the homozygous recessive parent generates four phenotypically and genotypically different classes of offspring in equal proportion. Approximately 50% of the offspring have parental phenotypes and the other 50% have recombinant or non-parental phenotypes. Next, we will determine what phenotypic proportions of offspring can be expected from a test cross if two genes are linked, that is, on the same chromosome. Here, both the color and size genes are located on the same chromosome. Again, both homologs are depicted here and each one has undergone replication. Here, both dominant alleles are paired together on one homolog, 
while both recessive alleles are paired together on the other homolog. This arrangement of alleles is called a cis, or coupling arrangement. Now, because the genes are linked, the big B and big R alleles are essentially stuck together, while the little b and little r alleles are also stuck together. As a result, most of the gametes produced by the heterozygote parent are either big B, big R, or little b, little r, and these gametes are produced at relatively equal frequencies. However, during meiosis, a process called crossing over, or recombination, which occurs at relatively low frequencies, allows for the generation of recombinant offspring. You can see here that crossing over allows for the formation of the two types of recombinant gametes, one with big R little b and the other with little r big B. Note that in this scenario, as in the scenario where the genes are located on different chromosomes, the same four classes of offspring are formed. However, because crossing over occurs at a relatively low frequency, the parental offspring outnumber the recombinant offspring. Here, since all offspring inherit a chromosome carrying two recessive alleles from the homozygous recessive parent, the chromosome inherited from the heterozygote parent determines whether the offspring are parental types or recombinant types. Parental offspring inherit a non-crossover chromosome from the heterozygote parent, while the recombinant offspring inherit a crossover chromosome from the heterozygote parent. The exact proportion of recombinant offspring formed is dependent on the frequency of crossing over between the two genes during meiosis, and this, in turn, is dependent on the distance between the genes. The closer the two genes are, the less likely crossing over is to occur between the genes. Now consider the alternative arrangement of the two genes in the same chromosome. In the trans, or repulsion arrangement, each homolog carries one dominant and one recessive allele. This arrangement is similar to the cis arrangement in that the same four classes of offspring are generated. However, the two classes of offspring that were of the parental type in the cis arrangement are now the recombinant type in the trans arrangement, and vice versa. Nonetheless, whether the alleles are in a cis or trans arrangement, we should still see to expect the parental offspring outnumber the recombinant offspring. Therefore, when faced with the task of determining the chromosomal arrangement of two genes, that is, whether they're linked or not linked, we can perform a test cross. If the two genes are on separate chromosomes, all four classes of offspring will be produced in equal proportion. When the two genes are linked, the two parental classes of offspring will outnumber the two recombinant classes of offspring. It is even possible in cases where two genes are very tightly linked, that only offspring of the parental type will be produced.